I always feel like there should be like a klaxon blaring when that <laughs> new song approaching comes in. The wow, wow. I'm so glad there isn't. <laughs> anyway, Zach, just as loud as possible. Yourself. <laughs> Only the strong. Hello, I'm Zach uh, of the Use Guys. We're a Let's Play channel. Which way am I? Hold on, yes. I got to orient. Way. Yes. Perfect. This one. Um, we're a Let's Play channel on YouTube. We play new games, old games. And it's just me and my friend Reed, and we have fun and play video game. And if you like to watch people have fun, then you should come watch us have fun because fun is fun. Um, so the song I'm bringing in today is called Howling at the Moon by a band called Sky Hill. Um, the, the, the chain of fandoms that have led me to this band basically were... My friend Reed, who introduced me to Game Grumps, Game Grumps introduced me to Star Bomb, which is like a video game based parody song uh, band. Uh, that led me to Ninja Sex Party, which in your episode zero, uh, we had that great song, <laughs> your, your live episode zero, uh, which everyone was a big fan of, and I will take no criticisms. Um, but then, uh, so Danny of Ninja Sex Party and also Game Grumps and Starbomb has also like a few other bands that he has done or is in the process of doing, including Sky Hill. Um, so it was just like a post or something. He was like, hey, you should check, you know, I also do this other band and check it out. So I did. And here we are. Um, and also, as a fun side note, is that in a fairly recent episode of Game Grumps I was watching just within the past few months, I think he kind of like mentioned offhand that they are making a new album. So Howling at the Moon, I believe is 20, was it 2015, 2016? Wasn't it, was it released? Um, and so potentially there's another album coming up, but there's also another Ninja Sex Party album coming up, but that's more certain. Anyway, um, I'm just going to read the bio and I'm going to do as please I can before I start roboting. Uh, Brooklyn-based Sky Hill was formed in the winter of 2006 when Dan Avedon and Peter Lennox created, uh, connected through their love of atmospheric beat heavy anthems, writing and recording throughout 2006 and early 2007 with Dan on vocals and Peter on guitars and keyboard. The band completed what would become their first, uh, their self-produced debut album run with the hunted in the spring of 2007, the album sound, a melt, a meld of down tempo electronica and Euro house and alt indie rock, reflected the influence of the band's many musical heroes, such as Zero Seven, Massive Attack, Depeche Mode, and U2. And I've only ever heard of two of those, so maybe I have more musical research to do. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy it, and play on, Don. That's Jesse. <laughs>
So, how do you like the song? <laughs> Did it send you over the moon? Good one. I might need to put in the classic clip comedy. That joke. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's yeah. That was that was super fun. Um, I think my immediate reaction is like not not that this it's a like slight against the song but like this is very much of the genre of what people call euro trash right <laughs> which is oh is it like uh the, it's a very euro like trash? european style edm um oh. that has just been popular for a long time uh it's not it's not like super into that like it's not actually bad or like this song isn't bad but like there there was like a lot of very similar sounding european edm that got produced at like the same time a oh, hero <laughs> hero says dog. it's not trash it's not Here, trash i was gonna say hero d disagrees which, with jesse's which i don't i don't think this would like actually fall strictly within that subgenre but it like it has very mm. shared elements where like it sounds very european to me um and okay. another thing that like it, it immediately reminded me of the theme song from Never Ending Story. Are you familiar? <laughs> mm, yeah. Never ending, never ending story. story. Oh. <laughs> Which mm -hmm. has very similar, like, synthy. That is what the kids call a bop, Jesse. It is a bop. I love that so, song. I yeah. love the movie. Um, <laughs> especially when Artax dies. Uh, <laughs> you heard it here. Jesse called the Never Ending Story Euro Trash. Get in the comments. <laughs> That's like Jesse's like sixth controversial opinion, I think. Oh. In a year or so. I was gonna say, what was the one where uh, uh, Jesse called Beyonce trash? I don't know, man. Call... He just he throws you're, down. You're... He throws down hard. I I just <laughs> nope. I didn't say she was no trash. No punches are pulled on this show. I just said <laughs> she could do better. <laughs> <laughs> and on Beyonce's internet of all places, <laughs> my God, she is the goat now. So. Uh, is like Eiffel 65 Euro trash? Yes. Very oh, much that. so. Yeah. Euro yeah, but that's from their trash. name, so. Oh. It's okay. What did you think? I'm sorry. I'm still trying to. Eiffel, because of Eiffel Tower of French, France. Crying dog. Oh. oh. But they're Italian, actually. Um. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, no, it was really fun. I thought I really liked the soundscape of it a lot. I am actually a huge Eiffel 65 fan. It's all I listened to for like a full year in college. So um, including both the English and Italian versions of all of their songs, I had every album. Um, wow. I was a music major. <laughs> I don't know what that about me. It's your escape from all the like serious listening you had to do. I know. I just needed like silly stuff. And you know what? Sometimes blue dava dee dava die is exactly what I needed. Anyway. Um, no, I, I thought it was really, really fun. I really like the soundscape. I really love that piano sound uh, that they use in it. That like electric piano-y piano sound. Um and I was super thankful that we got that chorus slash drop one more time at the end. I was like, no, they're not going to end it here. They better not. We need it one more time. And then it came, it built back up exactly the way I wanted it to and came back like full force. And that was, that was perfect. That was everything I needed. That's awesome. I have been stressing <laughs> about like picking, you know, the right, because Full disclosure, like I wanted to like sort of bring this band up because even while while Ninja Sex Party is like fairly popular, um, Sky Hill has gotten like very little attention, I feel like. And I was trying to listen through their songs and like wanted to make sure that this was the one that I wanted to bring to you guys. And I'm glad you have enjoyed it, even though Jesse called it trash. Ooh, um, sometimes trash this is, is certainly I'm a raccoon. Sometimes. One man's trash is that another man's be, treasure. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um but this is absolutely the song that I have listened to the most with the intent of like breaking it down, right? Um, just because I wanted to sort of sound like I had a general idea of what I was talking about and not completely out of place. Um, and so 
one of the the line that sticks with me even having listened to it is the um um does the morning lose meaning when the darkness is repeating i refuse to stop feeling like the idea of you know just you know even if you're having hard times you're gonna it's it's inevitable really that you're gonna have some good times there are things you can like you will enjoy and the fact that the rest of your life isn't going so good doesn't dull down the shine of these good moments and on the opposite side like just because you have good moments doesn't mean that other things aren't hard and it's okay to have both um it's just important not to let let it get to you right the the not to let the darkness sort of overwhelm because um, i know that i know that's a struggle oh, you're a robot i have a lot well, that's impossible because I have feelings. I, mean, I am a human man. <laughs> oh, no. This episode's going to be like three hours long. Full hours. Just Zach being a robot. <laughs> we'll make a Zach robot edit. Oh, no. <laughs> Jesse, are you okay? I... <laughs> it cannot have been that funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh no. Um. <laughs> Thank you for that lyrical highlight. I'm gonna go back to the song, pretend like none of that yeah, happened. Thank I'm, you for I, that lyrical highlight. Uh, Zach, I, I will be. I wasn't uh, paying okay. that much attention to the lyrics, um, but I'm glad you you brought up that because there's there's more depth than I think. Uh, someone might think just giving like a, a passive glance over that. Um, and I think what, what you, this, the line you mentioned is very like kind of inspirational sort of feeling or like it's, it's like that sort of theme for a movie for like the hero sort of deal going on. Uh, mm. And, and I think mm -hmm. that that really vibes with the overall sound of the song, like that, that driving rhythm and that like the, the, chord structures it's like a basic four chord like progression for the most part and and like you can kind of you you know what's going to happen like even from the first chord you can kind of guess what the next chord is going to be but like it's i think something in the favor of the song that like it's it's helping to reinforce that that vibe of like going through things and and like overcoming um and, yeah, the the hope in the in in despair and yeah. stuff like that. Um, there, I just had it in my brain. What was I gonna say? Oh, um, so I won't I won't bring it because it's it, it's not like sexually explicit, but it's like more explicit than I think you guys like on the channel. But Ninja Sex Party does a song that's not sex related um, called "Danny Don't You Know," and it fits very much in that realm of like sort of hope, you know, like. It, overcoming your uh it's like it's danny sit like singing to his younger self about like hey so life kind of sucks right now and you know what i get it um but let me tell you what the future is going to be like and it's just that it's probably my favorite ninja sex party song of all time just because it's because of that feeling that you were describing of like the hope being hopeful the the superhero sort of but also like not superhero because of superpower but because of your intent because of what you do you know like pulling some helping somebody out of like a a place of despair i think is a is a act of superheroism i think okay and i think that yeah. hopefulness is reinforced by the soundscape in this song too it's just like like jesse was talking about the chord structure being very simple but i think that makes it easy and like digestible in a fun way which can be a very good yeah. thing especially for this type of song i think um they're just like really bright and happy and fun and feel good and those are all the things you want in oh god i have a cat coming in the other arm i don't know what's <laughs> gonna happen those are all of the things that you want in a song that's like intended to make you feel like everything's gonna be all right yeah i'm a zoo <laughs> I'm a single woman zoo. I can't put the dog down or he cries. Mm. What if you put the dog on the cat? <laughs> they can come for each other. Then. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Zach, can you like elaborate a little more? Game Game Grumps 
guy is the lead singer for Ninja Sex Party and also this band. He's do he's doing yeah. all the things. Yeah, he's doing many things. Um, that's that's one thing. That's another sort of like sub thing that I really like about Game Gums because on the surface it's it's also a let's play channel and they have fun and make jokes and about games and stuff that they play. Um, but yeah, so it's it's Aaron Hansen and Dan Avidan, uh, and they that's their channel. And but Dan is also the lead singer of Ninja Sex Party, and it was. Also a part of another Let's Play channel called Steam Train, which I don't think is running anymore with Rubber Ross. Um, but he also does uh, this. Uh, this He has a song, at least one song, with a band called Night Runner uh, called Magnum Bullets, which is r also incredible. It's I'm, I'm, <laughs> I never thought I'd be one of those people who is like a diehard fan of any particular music group because I'm like, I like music. But like Dan is up right up there for me um, just because of his his the him his vocal abilities i think are are very uh in tune to my likes uh, but also his you know willingness to like go out and just do the things that he wants to do and enjoy doing them and i think that's very in, in, endearing to me uh so yeah so ninja sex party and sky hill he also helps out with a group called uh tupperware remix party which is uh twrp uh <laughs> it's what a very yes yes what is is there yes. context to the name what's their genre no <laughs> or not that i'm aware of um it is more like electronic so not euro trash like this uh but more like euro treasure it? thank you very much <laughs> you <were> euro, yeah. <laughs> euro trash is dead euro treasure is the new king um <laughs> It's it's hard to describe because I don't listen to them as much as I like listen to like Ninja Sex Party and, and other stuff. But they definitely they do. They just, just check them out. You have to check them out. Or if you have not on again, maybe they'll bring up a twerp song or something. We could do an electronica theme robot. or something. Robot theme. That's perfect for me because I love electronica music. <laughs> that that is appropriate. Robot trash is going to be the new genre for 2023. Did I hopefully address your your request for yes. ex expansion? Yes. Okay. I, but I yeah. was familiar um, with Game Grumps and I was familiar with Ninja Sex Party, but I had no idea that they were linked. So. Yeah. Oh yes, um, and and in fact, uh, and Aaron like on his own is also like very prolific. Like he owns a touring company. Like. What I thought was initially like taking tours around people like in San Francisco, California or whatever is like he tours bands and other mm -hmm. things. He does like Scribble Showdown, which is like a drawing. It's kind of like Pictionary, but like a show, like made as a comedy show, basically. Um, and it's and they do Game Game Games Live and it's they're They are very inspirational to me, not simply as a YouTube channel, but just like as sort of people, mm. which I think is really cool for me. That was very cool. And and their viewers. Rest. So, why? Rest is why important. rest? Rest is important. You should mm. listen to the song about yes. hope. Rest. Yes. So, if you want to listen to more of Skyhold, they're on they're on YouTube, they're on Spotify, um, and potentially another album coming out sometime in the future, which is I'm excited for. Right. I'm sorry. I love how much you committed to that. Potentially another album coming out sometime <laughs> in the future. <laughs> one I'm day, perhaps. i about everybody I bring. <laughs> just throwing all your robot eggs in one basket there. You know. <laughs> robots, exactly. robots lay eggs. <laughs> how do you think they make new robots? I thought they were mammals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because of all the hair on the robots, I get it. And they produce milk. All the good robots produce milk. Behold, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs>